G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and I'm joined by Flynn as usual. And it's been a little while, Flynn, because I've been in Japan for the last three weeks. So how have you been while I've been gone? Yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, work's been busy in a good way, I think, going fast, which I like. Nice. Uh, but a big thing that happened was that I went to B-Sides Canberra, which is my first B-Sides and... Um, for any of our Australian cyber listeners, B-Sides in Canberra is supposed to be the good one. Sydney's supposedly all right, but not as uh, cool. And I think it was good. There were some good talks, met some very, very interesting people. The kind of people that are so smart, it kind of scares you a little bit. Yeah. It's quite uh, humbling. You, I saw a couple of the guys on stage and spoke to a couple of guys where they're like, oh, I'm no genius, but I <laughs> did this one thing that would take me probably 30 years to do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's like, yeah, I'm not a genius, but I found these three CVEs. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Um, some highlights for me were the, it was the email spoofing one uh, talk, which it, it wasn't actually very, um, I suppose, in-depth. Like, it was cool. I, th- I feel like it was more, it was a good, like, hacker process thing where he was stringing a couple of different things together and using a, a sort of process to figure out how to exploit it. But yep. um, long story short, he basically could make an email an external email look like anyone within a company including their profile picture with no warning banners by just wow. manipulating the from uh the from banner in smtp i believe wow so pretty crazy used a lot of cool stuff with like special characters and stuff one thing i f- was going to ask him and i forgot was i wonder if you can sort of use the ban list in the email to ban certain special characters if that'll pick it up i'm assuming it won't just because it's in the from header and it's not it, i don't think it recognizes that yeah i don't know maybe that's one way you can sort of take a counter at it yeah um apart from that the next time i go which i'm hoping to go next year as well i think i would want to go in with more of a game plan there's so much to do there that it's kind of overwhelming in a sense like there was a lot of talks which were mostly good but there's also soldering which a lot of people were into but it just wasn't really my thing yep i just kind of wasn't too interested in it there was lock pickings there was cts which i didn't do much of the cts at all this year i kind of focused more on just talks and then networking in general nice. but it was good uh, spoke to a lot of really smart people it was cool nice that sounds really fun so I have to ask you, how were the vendors' products at B-Sides this year? Uh, one thing that I'm a big fan about B-Sides is I'm, I'm sure you have the same gripe, Max, is when you go to a conference and it feels like a sales pitch for everybody. Yeah. Um, B-Sides, I felt it felt fairly unique that there wasn't really that much of it. There was one room out of, say, I don't know, five to eight Yeah, had like partners in there. And for the most part, they were just kind of sitting there. You get kind of cool stuff. And one of them was selling like flipper zeros for real, real cheap. I think like a hundred bucks, which is, I almost copped one, but then I decided <laughs> no, because I already spent a lot of money. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it didn't feel overwhelming. Like mm-hmm. I've seen it in a lot of other places where you just get, uh, I suppose, clone companies that they all do the same thing. Yep. So for something that I have a bit of a gripe with, and if you've chatted to me in real life, you probably know that I'm not a huge fan of vendors at conferences. I know they're important because they help pay for the conference itself. And I know that there are a lot of really great vendors out there that have awesome products. Namely, uh, well, I'll drop some names, um, Orca. I think their product is is really quite good. Uh, Asset Note, I quite like their product as well. Um, CrowdStrike, you know, they have their dilemma, but, you know, I, I, they're a really good product. Um, I... I Generally, like a Z Scalar and Netscope too. I think they're really awesome vendors and awesome people to chat to. But unfortunately, when you go to a conference, a few things happen. Generally, yeah, you run into a lot of vendors, exactly like you said. They're clones. They're not very intuitive. The salespeople there most of the time are developers if it's a smaller sort of company. And when you ask them, which I've done a lot, right? I You ask them, okay... I like the look of your product, but, you know, uh, can you explain a little bit about how it works and what it does and how it uses, you know, what you've, what you're saying that it uses, how it works. They, a lot of the time, they don't give you an answer that's really satisfying. Like they can't tell you exactly what it does, which strikes me as a bit odd. And 
as well as uh, a lot of the time you, you know, you ask them what it does, they tell you and you go, that doesn't really seem like it's worth being a company. Like that seems a little bit low effort or even, um, you know, I wouldn't say fraudulent. I don't think it's fraudulent, but you know, just really like it, it doesn't really need to be there. Like it doesn't make sense for it to be there. Um, and then the second thing that happens is after the conference, you get spammed with a billion emails from these small vendors and they just do not leave you alone about, Hey, can you each have 15 minutes about our product? Hey, can we chat for 15 minutes about our product? No, I do not want to chat to you about your product because I've read into it and it looks like a piece of shit, honestly. Um, it, it is very frustrating when my email inbox gets filled up with vendors with shitty products. And, you know, shitty doesn't just mean bad. It just means they're, you know, not the right product for me. I don't really have an interest in them. And yeah, cold emailing me is just going to make me more annoyed about it if you don't have a great PR strategy. So, yeah, uh, then, uh, particularly conferences that I go to, it's, it's you know, about half-half good and bad. But, um, yeah, it, it does frustrate me uh, going, chatting to vendors, having a, you know, trying to have a conversation with them. Some have actually been quite rude that I've had chats with. And, um, and they, yeah, don't tell you what the product does or they tell you what it is and you go, well, you know, I can do that in my backyard. Uh, you know, I'm, my company is doing that in-house for, like, very cheap. I don't really see the point of your product. Yeah, that's just sorry. Sorry for my rant, but that's just something that I've um <laughs> I've picked up for going to a few conferences. No, no I completely get what you're saying. I, I went to a conference one time and I got a somebody cold call. So I didn't give my number to them. Basically, somebody cold called my main office and spoke to my director, asking to if they could speak to me. That, yeah, that is not how you should go about doing something. No, no it's very unprofessional I yeah like. super unprofessional and you know it just makes you look like a dick um yeah and I, I get that cold calling is somewhat of a necessity maybe for some small companies and like i get that it's hard but like i don't know reel it in sometimes yeah try and be a bit creative yeah so uh another thing that we wanted to talk about we i had a conversation a while ago about somebody that what is an actual true end-to-end -end messenger because you see a lot of um, messengers and they claim they're very very secure and they basically aren't uh, namely telegram um, I saw some information come out recently that like telegrams no longer encrypted um, I actually I'm not sure if it actually was encrypt end-to-end -end encrypted to begin with but it's um, yeah basically it's not as secure as the company makes out to be I was wondering, Max, do you have any sort of messenger that you would recommend and what is the purpose of having an end-to-end -end encrypted messenger? Yeah, that's a very good and useful question. So the purpose of having an end-to-end -end messenger is just to, you know, make sure that the messages you're sending aren't being used for the company's profit. They aren't being used to track you, sell your data, you know, uh, or trying to pin stuff on you if, you know, say, say I... I'm a, I'm a cybersecurity professional and I go, huh, I've found this kind of like vulnerability in this system or, you know, I found this, you know, how do I go about contacting the company? And then let's say next week, the vulnerability gets exploited. You know, if you're not using an encrypted software, they would just pin that on you and say, look, we found you making these messages, even though, you know, in court, probably you'd be able to say, no, no, it wasn't me at all. So it's just being able to, you know, rely on the system you're using to keep your messages safe that's the main point of an end-to-end -end encrypt, uh, encrypted service and yeah so as for what's out there um i'll just name a few names so everyone's heard of whatsapp everyone's probably now heard of telegram which is the popular russian one there's wechat which is the chinese one there's uh line which is the japanese one um, and I'm sure there's many more, but those are the sort of the bigger um, names out there. And sorry, I forgot, I forgot to say that uh, uh, WhatsApp is, uh, yeah, American owned by Facebook. Now, what the issue is with end-to-end -end encrypted uh, messaging apps, which is what we're going to just call them, end-to-end -end encrypted. That means that, yeah, by theory, no one should be able to read your messages. Now, it turns out Telegram, if I, I believe did not actually, it wasn't actually end-to-end -end encrypted in the first place, which I believe they said they were. 
So, um, you know, that's that's obviously not good. But uh, the, another issue with a lot of these services is while they technically are end-to-end -end encrypted, they still retain some metadata about the users and uh, what the users are doing. So I'll just use a very quick example. Now, while WhatsApp does use end-to-end -end encryption, um, they store metadata about who you are, where you are, and what devices you're communicating with so while they can't read the messages they can infer you know potentially what you're talking about from from that kind of data and you know i'm very sure that um wechat probably does the same thing and also line too um now what i recommend is a there's a protocol slash service called signal now uh it's open source it uh, is very secure. It has, you know, their own uh, inbuilt sort of uh, way of securing your messages. I don't believe they store much metadata, and it's more of like a, like a non for profit than a you know a big conglomerate company. So if yeah, if you think of it as a spectrum, it's very far the other end. So you can kind of just you know be more assured that they're not going to have. Uh, a massive drive to try and get rich off of you, at least not now. So yeah, I, that was a very long answer, but yeah, <laughs> Signal uh, seems to be quite a good service. Yeah, and I suppose I've seen people make the argument at times that like, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, why would you need end-to-end -end encryption? Yeah. Which, as you said, that, you know, there could be sort of issues with, you know, potential fraudulent claims but also another issue is you know if you're in a less fortunate area of the world where i don't know maybe you have a, a corrupt government and you're trying to message somebody something about yep. um you know potential human rights anything sort of like that um if you don't have an end-to-end -end method you're basically screwed a lot yep. of the times um which it, when you're surveilling civilians something like that is extremely extremely important so you know people can actually communicate and try and work through things like that yep so in case you're wondering yeah so signal is american and it's a non-for-profit too so um yeah well that obviously we that can change in the future um yeah that's probably a good option if exactly like flynn said you want to you know keep your messages safe and yeah just uh kind of reduce or lessen your online footprint Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe. <laughs>